Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Reda, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special interview for everybody, but really quick before we get into that, a reminder to follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. You can also head on over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe to never miss a thing at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. On today's episode, we are joined by current NWSL champion Tegan McGrady of the Washington Spirit. Tegan, how are you doing today? Ever on the move as always. I know I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we're great. I'm we're like so excited to, to have you back. You know, we chatted with you ahead of the semifinal with the Washington mm-hmm. Spirit and we talked a little bit about the journey that the team was on, but now you're back as an NWSL champion and it's such a joy to have you here. So congratulations on you and the team becoming NWSL championship. Let's just start with the easiest one. How are all the emotions of actually reaching this achievement and being an NWSL champion? Um, It's it's still a surreal feeling. I think as each day goes on, it it starts to set in a little bit more. Um, I think waking up each morning, you know, my roommate, Sam, uh, you know, still always puts things out there like, you know, like, still there still happened like we're all still so excited and you know being able to just you know celebrate with each other has been the best I'm glad you guys are still celebrating because that is so well deserved I mean honestly all year you should be celebrating until the next championship comes Mm -hmm. around Um, but let's start in Louisville with the celebrations post game in the locker room uh, that night how was it it was it was so much fun I think like as a professional athlete and just anyone who watches, you know, professional sports in general, you always get to see the tarps being put up in, you know, other sports locker rooms. So you can, you know, pop the champagne, pop whatever you are and just kind of go wild and, you know, just really soak it all in, like literally just soak it in everything that's going on. Um, So, I mean, it's always, it's always been a dream. I think of everyone to just be able to have that like in their locker room as soon as the game's over you know everyone's exhausted the emotions are all running high but it was so much fun and then to you know be with each other all that night and have all of our families there with us too and all being in the same room and watching our families get to see everyone and meet other families you know it it happens I feel like a lot in college but not nearly as much in the pros just because you know you come from everyone comes from different places so it's it's a little bit tougher so it was so much fun just seeing everyone's family, seeing everyone's reactions, how we all celebrated with each other was just, you know, a night that I could relive over and over again. You know, the the NWL championship being played uh, in Louisville, it was really a wonderful event. The whole stadium was like lit up, like with noise from everyone in attendance. Uh, And it was really, I was on the ground covering it for CBS and it was, it was really, I mean, I hate to be this way, but it's like, you had to be there kind of vibe. (laughs) It yeah. was buzzing, right? The, the city was buzzing and, mm-hmm. and everybody had a lot of excitement uh, about it. But, you know, you mentioned the, the family and friends aspect. And there was also that component really for both teams. There was a ton of uh, family and friends for, for both teams in attending this, uh, this event. Um, who in particular did you have uh, in the stands uh, watching, watching the game for you? Um, I had my parents there. So that was um, really nice. They've been at, you know, all my major events, you know, always making the trips out and whatnot. So that was, it was really great having them there. And now with, with the team mostly back in, in DC, in the DC area, are there like plans for like DC area celebrations before everybody like heads off to, to be in their respective uh, homes in the off season? So we, yeah, yeah, we had, um, we had a celebration last night with all the players kind of like a last hurrah because a lot of girls were leaving today and um, most of us, everyone else will be out tomorrow just trying to get home before Thanksgiving. But I do know that I think our team put out yesterday that there will be a parade before the start of next season um, uh, for us in DC. So I think that's, you know, all in order, ready to go. They really want to make it, you know, a big thing for us. So we're all super excited to get back into DC now and be able to relive it all over again before season starts next year. We interrupted you in the middle of, of your packing. You'll be traveling home, going back to California. Will the celebrations continue at home? Any plans at home to keep the party going? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I love going home 
in general. So I think just going home like with this and having so many family, so many family friends watching the final, just, you know, getting all those texts of everyone being like, we can't wait to see you when you get home. Like we can't wait to celebrate. Um, you know, Thanksgiving is always going to be a great time with the family. And I, I can't wait to see everyone once I get home. I'm sure it'll be warm welcomes and celebrations for you. Um, let's talk about the the actual game a little bit before all of the celebrations and, and the championship. Um, you said it, it was exhausting at the end of it. It was a long game. There was overtime. It was big battles all over the pitch, uh, defensively, a lot of back and forth. Um, it, this game almost felt more challenging and more exhausting for you guys on the field than any other game. Is that true? Why, why was this one more challenging than any other? Um, I think, you know, a huge part of it was the fact that I think since we have such a, a young team, our nerves were really running high. Like you have a lot of players that, you know, like, Kelly even said before the game, we had a couple of girls that, you know, we're, you know, we're all almost sick to our stomachs, like being like, oh my gosh, like this is, you know, some of the biggest games that we've ever played. And then Kelly's like, guys, it's just a game. And I'm like, yeah, over here, like you've played in world cup finals. I'm like, yeah, for you, it's just a game. Like, but for a lot of us, like that's the biggest, you know, game that a lot of us have ever played in, in our lives. So I think the nerves were high, the emotions, you know, just run so much higher. You like to think of it as a regular game, but deep down inside, like, you know, what is on the line at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, being the competitor that you are, you, you shove it all down for a little bit. And then as soon as the game is over, you're like, wow, like the amount that I just compartmentalized right now, um, just to get on this field and do the best that I can. And so the emotions during the game are just overwhelming, exhausting, trying to make sure that you're mentally checked in, not just physically for, you know, for some players, 45, 90, 120, like you're, you're just looking at a long time frame and everyone's putting everything on the line out there. So it's just, it is overall exhausting, especially with the way that the game, what I think, especially for our team going in at halftime, you know, being down one, nothing, you have to find another gear. You have to find another place to shift into. Um, and that's not always the easiest too, going into a final and being down one, nothing at halftime. You know, I want to just lean into that a little bit. Like you were talking a little bit about the buildup to the actual big game itself. And when we had you uh, on an interview ahead of the semifinal previously, you know, we chatted a little bit about you and like your individual um, journey within the team this year itself, making your way back into form and making sure you, you know, broke through that starting 11 and, and got back into those, the starting position for, for the team. And here's this huge game and you're yeah. finding yourself in that starting lineup for it uh, in the mm -hmm. championship match, the biggest match of the year. So uh, how were those nerves maybe heading in to that type of game for you as a professional in NWSL versus maybe other games that you've played uh, during your career? Yeah, they're definitely, definitely up there with the most nerves I've ever felt before a game, probably that and um, the 2017 national championship game that I played. And those were almost identical for me just because it also was an earlier game in the day. Um, I'm not one that likes to eat a lot in the morning. So it's really hard for me to get ready for a big game at noon. You're talking, you know, you need a pretty good breakfast, but breakfast doesn't happen to be like my favorite meal of the day. So like for me, it's hard to like be like, okay, like I got to swallow something, but my body doesn't necessarily want to. So I think, you know, waking up in the morning, especially with earlier games is so much different from playing night games. You know, at least with night games, you can wake up, you have time, you know, you have hours on your side, but for a noon game, you're, you're really just up and you, your mind has to be ready to go. You have to be ready to go. And there's really no time to falter on anything for game day. Yeah, it is wake up and go. So what did you settle on for breakfast on Saturday morning? Um, I tried to do some avocado toast and some eggs and then some potatoes, try and just get something to, you know, sit a little bit, get some carbs going, but yeah, I, I didn't get much in my stomach. I tried to, but I think it just really depends on the person. You're like, I had a teammate who's sitting next to me eating like a full breakfast and I'm just sitting there like, oh no, like I can't even watch you eat right now. Like I'm so nervous and I don't like breakfast already. So it, it definitely just depends. <laughs> Well, Tegan, you got the start, uh, you got the win, ended up an NWSL champion, but throughout this match, um, Chris Ward and, and Washington, there was a lot of rotation and players, mm -hmm. uh, and substitutes coming in. And for you being a player that does get rotated out, how does your role change then, um, for the rest of the match kind of, uh, uh being on the sidelines in that position? 
yeah, it definitely, it definitely changes. And I think, you know, coming off at halftime, you know, feeling the way that I did feeling as if I kind of let the team down with that goal being scored on the back post, it's, it's not the best feeling. I wasn't feeling the best about myself in that position, feeling like I had played a pretty good half and then going in off of that, you know, you just, you want the team to do well. And I think I kind of had to dig a little bit deeper in that moment and be like, this isn't necessarily just about you. Like you need to get your teammates going now. Like you did everything that you could on the field today, you did your best. And now it's not time to think about you in this moment. You can think about it later. You can think about it tomorrow. You can go back and watch film if you want, but right now you got to be there for your teammates. You have to keep them going, knowing that this game could go into overtime, knowing that it could come down to the last minutes. So just trying to, you know, keep going. I think I was like pacing on the bench back and forth at one point, especially at the end after we had scored the second, I couldn't even sit still anymore. And I think that was a lot of us. And you know, I really give kudos to the players that come off the bench and are able to put in the shift that they do, especially in a game like that. It is so hard to come into a game and like already and be ready to go and to do that in a championship game and to be asked to finish out a game or to go in and be like, we need to score comes from a completely different type of mentality than starting the game. And, you know, even the players that were warming up all the way until, you know, we're in overtime, like they have to stay mentally checked in too, but you know, we're also trying to keep our players going. So I think that was what I felt needed to be a big role to try and keep the players going from the sideline because a lot of them were, our bench players were either warming up. So there was really only two of us on the bench at one point um, that were there kind of in that moment. So I think that's just like a whole other thing is, you know, having to keep them going too. You know, as, as the, as the game went into overtime, it's, it's two periods of extra time, right? 15 in the, in, a quick 15 minutes for first and then another 15 minutes in the second. And the team, you know, pulls ahead and kind of early in that, in that first extra time. And there's still that second extra time you have to play, right? So there's a number of moments during an extra time like that where there's opportunities to huddle up, right? The, the breaks mm-hmm. between them or any potential water breaks of stoppage in between. When you're in that role, when you're in that moment, there's often like those team huddles that take mm-hmm. And there are players who have said sometimes like in those moments that maybe they just sort of black out for a second and they're not there. But for you, for someone who is like in the more supportive role at this moment, um, are you uh, witnessing or remembering like what perhaps is discussed at that moment? Like what is said during those moments to try to like make sure that your team closes this out? Um, I know, you know, Kelly is always a a big person in the huddle saying like, you know, we got this. Like, I think it was very apparent that um, you know, both teams were very tired, but I think it was just trying to like, keep our team very positive and like, come on, like we got this, like we've done this before. Um, just kind of like keeping everyone going, like keeping everyone's heads up, especially after we scored the second goal to be like, we, we know how to finish out games. Like this is, this is our time. And to make sure that we're mentally locked in, um, even discussing like, okay, like if it gets down to this time, like you're going to the corner with the ball, like making sure that we understand like the roles that we each individually played and making sure that everyone is completely locked in with all the emotions running so high with, you know, knowing that you're up and you only have 15 minutes left to go, you know, anything could always easily go wrong or go right. So I think it it was mostly about, you know, everyone, Andy, Kelly, um, just all the other, you know, big people in there just saying like, this is it. Like, this is, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. We've been working for this and all we need to do is close it out. We just need to continue to do. And I think a part that I forgot was the fact that we, even after scoring, we didn't want to just sit back. We wanted to try and keep the ball. We're like, we know they're getting tired. So instead of just booting it up the field, instead of giving them the ball back every time we get it, can we keep it from them? Can we try and make them come and get us instead of just sitting back and relaxing, you know, once you get into the last five minutes, you know, you put in another defender, you do the things that you have to, but I think it's also remembering the team that you are in that moment and being able to still do those things and being smart when you have to. I think Washington and, and the team overall prove to uh, the league, to other teams, to the country, to fans watching, um, you guys are so much stronger than anything you went through. And I know that uh, the spirit attitude has kind of been never say die throughout this mm-hmm. season. Um, and it's been echoed um, uh, across the team and, and even across the league. And, and it really came to a point during this championship. So where did this come from? Never say die. What does it mean for you when it's said? Um, I think it was just like, 
put everything to the side. Like the one thing that we can do is still fight. That's the one thing that we have control over. Throw tactics out the window, throw everything that's gone out the window. We know the players that we are. We know the talent we have. We know the team that we have, but none of that matters if we don't continue to fight for one another. And I think that's where it came from was at one point in the season um, after training session, we all just sat there and we said, look, we can either go and fight for this and show everyone that we still have the team that we know we have, or we can throw in the towel. Either way, we have to be here and we're going to have to keep playing with each other so we can make something great out of this or we can call it a year. And I think everyone was like, you know, like we have to be here. Like we, we want to prove something. We want to make sure that even through all of this, the only people that we feel that we absolutely need to play for are all the people that have been standing behind us and ourselves. And I think that's where most of it came from. It came from the fact of this place deep down of like, we're all competitors, you know, past our talent, past, you know, what we can do, you know, on the field. It's just the fact that we're willing to keep fighting every single day. It's how we feel. It shows our true love for the game that no matter how much can go wrong, like we find the little joys and everything. Um, So I think that was just a big part of it. I love that so much. It sounds like it resonates so deeply with not just you, but the entire team, you know, and, and, and in during this entire playoffs and, and the spirits push and lead up in, into, into the playoffs and then the championship final, you know, we, we spoke to Ashley Hatch, we spoke to you, we spoke to Andy Sullivan, we, we chatted with Aubrey Bledsoe ahead of all of these big, these big games. Mm-hmm. And it was Aubrey Bledsoe who sat here with us and, and also mentioned another bit of a mantra that came to life in terms of a team of destiny. And mm-hmm. it resonated with her. And that's something that she was pushing, you know, with, with, with that messaging with, with the rest of you all as well. So one of the privileges of being able to be on the ground there for CBS and, and cover this championship final um, in person was got to talk a little bit with more players about that. And in that post game, it was Kelly O'Hara and Trinity Rodman. You know, you've got mm-hmm. the, the experienced player of, of the team and then you've got the, the rookie of the year there. And, and I asked them that, and I'm going to ask you as well, like just getting this win, does it just sort of feel like maybe it is the start of something special, not just the end of something? Because that's what we've heard a lot about from you guys, is that you wanted to make it to the end to this point. But now mm-hmm. that you want it, does it almost sort of feel like it's possibly like a new beginning of a new era for this team? Yeah, I think so. I think it it takes a lot to do what we just did through everything that we went through. And to think that it would just be over now is is not what we want to think at all. We think that when we do have, you know, a year without everything that happened, like we always say, like, what do you think we could have done if everything went right for us this year? And we'll never know that, like, we'll never know the answer to that, but we do know that we have something special here. If we were able to get through everything that we had come at us this way, this year, we know that there's something even more special. We just unlocked a very small piece of it. And we're so excited for next season to try and find a whole new side, another piece of what could have been missing this year and know a whole new side of, you know, what could have been, but we absolutely want to try and find. Love that so much. I know we're just delighted to. to Tegan, I have to ask, I have to ask, it's never too early. Is, is there a two Pete in the future? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you always want the back to back. That's always something you want to go for. It's, it's a given. I, I have a strong feeling that if, you know, whatever happens in this off season, we're going to have a special group next year, no matter what it looks like. I think the core, there's so much to this team. There's so much that this organization wants to do. And I think that through this off season and going into next year, I, I think they can really make it happen. I love that. Aim, aim high. Don't don't set the bar low. You guys are no. and, and accomplish what what you accomplish. And I think I did mm-hmm. refer to it in that in that press conference is like going from a a team a team of destiny to perhaps a team team of dynasty. And yeah. Kelly, and Kelly mentioned you know oh like you, you can't say that after one, but it all starts somewhere. And she did agree yep. with it. So it's it's going to be exciting to continue covering the Washington Spirit as uh, now you guys are looking ahead into next year and uh, now defending uh, your championship. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, Tegan, for yeah. joining us today. Congratulations 
once again on being an NWSL champion. We want to thank all of our listeners for listening as always. Thanking you, Tegan, for joining. Congrats again to everyone. You can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third or on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever you listen to your podcast shows. We're also available as video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash Attacking Third. And we'll be back Friday with the United States Women's National Team coverage ahead of the friendly against Australia. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Tegan McGrady, this was Attacking Third.